the death of women's sport continues. Now, anyone who cares for the concept of sport, or has any respect for sports science for that matter, will be perfectly aware of the intersectionist ongoing attack on women's sport. This is courtesy of the former's insistence that biology is a pseudoscience and gender is all that matters. And despite the fact that the correlation between testosterone levels and performance is as good as proven, and that, well, biological men have greater athletic capabilities on average, sporting authorities and even athletes are continuing to cave in on the efforts to make sport more inclusive by allowing biological men identifying as women to participate in women's sports. Outrage on this matter from the intersectionist side first emerged, or at least was brought to public knowledge, when South African sprinter Caster Samanya was blocked from competing in the 2019 World Championships in Doha. This led to articles such as this being published, claiming that Caster Samanya is being discriminated against, and in their words, is being forced to alter her body to make slower runners feel secure in their womanhood. Okay. Hmm. Yes. So if we scroll down a little bit, Chase reports that the courts, this is this is in light of her being denied um, the right to perform at Doha, the courts decided that discriminating against some women is required for athletic competitions to be fair to other women. This is just cope, basically. Yep. And what uh, Chase proceeds to say is discrimination against some women is necessary to protect other women, according to the Court of Arbitration for Sports and the Swiss Federal Supreme Court's ruling in the Castor Samania case. What she says, or he, in other words, the CAS and the Swiss Appeals Court have decided that differential treatment for black women, trans women and intersex women is required for athletic competitions to be fair to other women at least. It is under a system in which white people wield tremendous power over the bodies and autonomy of those who are perceived to be a threat. And in short, Chase believes that the essential foundations of sport based on rules which uphold, you know, fair competition by ensuring that no competitors enjoy an unfair advantage made possible by the recognition of certain objective conditions is of less importance than how people just wish to identify. Of course. And of course, what Chase and the intersectionists are demanding is that sport should bend over or step aside and play an active role in establishing their delusions of themselves as real to the detriment of all the other competitors. A bit inconsiderate, if you ask me. But anyway, I'm going to bring us into the present day. Um... So if we fast forward for today's concern, the very recently, a 22-year-old transgender woman named Nia Thomas has been smashing a lot of records in swimming. I mean, it really is amazing how good trans transgender women are at sports, isn't it? Yeah, they always come in and immediately dominate. Mm. Who'd have seen that one coming? Yes. Uh, but Kenneth Garger of the New York Post reports, a 22-year-old transgender swimmer at the University of Pennsylvania in America continued her dominant performance this season, setting numerous pool, meet and program records at a three-day event in Ohio on the weekend. Leah Thomas blew away her competition in the two and the 500 meter freestyle preliminaries and finals at the Zippy Invitational at the University of Akron, according to results posted by the school. In the finals, Thomas notched a winning time of four minutes thirty. Hang on, is that four four minutes thirty four point oh six? Good enough for a new Ivy League record. If we scroll down for a bit, we can see a picture of. Leah Thomas and how ladylike she is on the oh, right. Oh, it's this person. Yes. Yeah, I've seen this person show up a few times. They've just grown out the hair. Mm -hmm. That's that is... all, basically all they've yeah. done. What's, what's interesting is... Um, I've had long hair before and I was not a woman when I did so. No, that's, that, no, that's right. And I, I have as well. I will not share the pictures because it's rather embarrassing, but, none, but nonetheless... Mine are you... pretty easily available yes, if and... you go searching for them. Yeah, as you can see on the left, Will Thomas, as he was previously known, also competed in swimming as a man. How well was he doing as a man? Well, 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 well enough to get a medal of some sort. Yeah, well, you can get mm. participation medals. So yeah, yeah, that 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 that's true. Um, but yes, one of the most outspoken people on this matter has been Piers Morgan, and Piers Morgan has written an article for the Mail Online that actually I think he deserves um, that he deserves credit for. So if we move on to Piers Morgan's article on this um so the clues in the title really if michael phelps began competing as a transgender woman all hell would break loose so why is nothing being done to stop trans athletes like leah thomas from destroying women's sport that's literally what everyone who cares about sport 
is saying about this entire matter. Yeah, I mean, I mean, once again, it, it's a, it's a, almost a moral foundational principle that people recognise innately. That being fairness, fairness mm. and unfairness, and it's whether or not you want to be able to classify it in one way or another, it's pretty easily observable. People tend to recognise it because it's mm. innate when they see it, even if they can't describe it in words. Yeah. But the intersectionists obviously don't care about yeah. this, not, le not least because, well, most of them probably hate sport. But anyway, Piers uses the, the analogy of, um, of this what if Michael Phelps identified as a woman to make, um, to make this point before turning to Leah Thomas, where he says the following with reference to the achievement mentioned. If we scroll down a little bit, right to the bottom, in fact, I think it is. Yes, so Leah Thomas is on her way to irrevocably disintegrate women's swimming records. I think it's even further down, actually. Further down still. Oh, <laughs> yes. Piers decided to go on a bit with this one. Yes, he did. Ah, oh, well, it, just, it doesn't matter that much if you, no, just, want to, no, if you just want to carry no. it. Oh, wait, here it is. Yes. Here it is. Not, not because she's a natural-born brilliant swimmer, because when she competed as a man, she was mediocre at best. No, she will do it it's because she's got way. a hugely advantageous physique over her female rivals. What would it take to stop this transgender sporting madness? Does Floyd Mayweather have to identify as a woman and get into the ring as a female boxer? Or Usain Bolt come out of retirement to compete on the women's springing circuit? Or perhaps Michael Phelps really should transition and jump in the pool against women half his size and with a fraction of his speed. If you think something like this will never happen, then you're living in a cloud of cuckoo land. Stop this insanity now before it's too late. Yeah, I mean, Based peers. I mean, the sad thing that he's talking about there is that uh, referencing Floyd May does Floyd, May Way May Look, Floyd Mayweather have to identify as a woman to get in the ring as a female boxer? Well, well, I've not seen that in boxing yet. It has happened in it, UFC. I forget. Hmm. Was it Fal Fox? Fallon Fox? Some See, I'm you. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, some, something like that. It was like a few years ago now, even maybe back in 2013 identified as a woman trans um, transition and then just went into absolutely beat the snot oh, out of a num number of female uh, UFC fighters. Although from what I'm aware, that don't quote me on this, um, I might be misremembering, from what I'm aware, they did also act actually get their ass handed to them by a female UFC fighter. So serves them right, if you ask me. Yeah, oh, 100%. Um, but as you can probably expect, uh, Pink News have come out, come out to present Leah Thomas's achievements as, well, stunning and brave, as you can probably guess. Um, predictably not mentioning once that, well, Leah once competed as a male. And quite quite amusingly, actually, there, Leah is quoted to have saying himself, being trans has not affected my ability to do this sport, and being able to continue is very rewarding. You don't yes. say. I bet breaking <laughs> all of those records is very rewarding. You're right. Yes. And if we get the next click up from Pink News, which is linked to this one, um, which is where the way basically pointed out that he is that Leah Thomas has been the, the victim of um of many states' attempts to um to uphold their current rules on well men participating in women's Bi events. biological biological men, men yes participating in biological women's sports and of course they've called this transphobic of course they did even yes. though there is a clear and easily observable advantage yeah. backed up by science but this is the sort of stuff that you see all the time the intersectionalists mm. and the intersectional feminists in particular will just outright deny that there is any yeah. biological difference between the two sexes including outright just saying oh you know there's no average height difference or weight difference or, or strength difference and it's like yeah do you live in the same reality as the, the rest the, of the, us? the sad thing is I, I was i've been searching this stuff all morning and if if, if you actually try to find studies um that, that actually point out this ob these obvious facts, which which look we all know to be true. Google, Google has actually found it has actually I suppose for for its machine learning has actually made it extremely difficult to yeah. actually to to get rid of the misinformative ones. If you want to find the proper information regarding that, I would recommend reading books like Human Diversity by mm. Charles Murray, who uh, was the guy who did the bell curve years ago. So he's no no stranger to controversy. But last yes. year he did a good book called Human Diversity, where he talks about uh, the meta studies that have mm. been done regarding biological differences in all of their many different ways. Yeah. But frustratingly, the first studies that actually came up when I specifically searched for results that had produced these, um, well, 
these of these are things that we pretty much know as facts yes. and, we're, and we're educated to know this as a fact all all i got were results producing um or suggesting that there is absolutely no correlation between testosterone and performance yes there has um, been an infiltration and subversion of the academic journals i found i remember a few years ago i searched through i think it was scientific american and found a article saying that there was no diff there was not two genders there was far more than two mm. genders and of course as you'd imagine it used the genetic exceptions to yes. prop that up if you were a, a biological man born with all of your fun uh, organs functioning properly but for whatever genetic reason you have a small dead uterus in your stomach which is an example that they actually used that must make you a different gender in. I mean, it doesn't really make much sense to me, but okay. No, no, not really. Uh, but, but, but nonetheless, Pink News have still um, tried to transmit the idea that upholding the integrity of sport is against equality. Once again, um, they don't care about no. sports. I mean, it, so there's no big deal for them. Yeah, I mean, equality, at least to my knowledge, my common understanding of it is that it involves eliminating unfair advantages, not enforcing them. Um, but Pink News, you, of course, please yourselves, as I'm sure you always do. So if if we move on, um, this one is a, is actually quite funny because this this is the first transgender Olympian, Laurel Hubbard, I think a um, a New Zealander. Oh yes, this person. Yes, and th 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 this is funny because um, this might be the first transgender athlete to compete. Um, he was a weightlifter, as you as you can see in the Olympics. He still failed to win a medal. Yeah, I remember seeing I remember seeing this, and lots, lots of people were mm. actually a little bit worried about this, primarily because. It kind of gives the intersectionalists someone to point to and go. Actually, See, there's does. no, there's no advantage whatsoever. She couldn't even get through the first, uh, yeah. get through the preliminaries or whatever. Yeah. Well, uh, ne ne needless to say, um, try identifying as a child next time. You might have a little bit more luck <laughs> in sport. But I would, I would actually like to end with some some athletes who at one point actually tried to make a stand against this, this insanity. One was Martina Navratilova. Um, sadly, however, her stance didn't actually end up lasting that long um rather disappointingly and this was revealed in a documentary that she was a that she was a part of how did she cave she caved yeah and in short she she initially claimed and um, that th this was upon a lot of criticism against her that competing in a women's sport with a man's body is cheating and yes it absolutely is yes. however she's now come she's come out in this documentary which was released a couple of years ago to say uh, the following if we just scroll down a little bit what I have come to realise, the biggest thing for me, is just the level of difficulty trans people go through. This cannot be underestimated. The fight for equality and recognition is just huge. Now look, I'm not, I'm not saying that there's no legitimate um, suffering involved in suffering from gender dysphoria. Oh, absolutely. But we, but we are talking, pe talking about people who are, willing, who are willingly entering, knowing that they have an advantage against everybody else without any respect for that sport. Yes. And putting their own arbitrary sense of importance you above... Could above the integrity of sport. Yeah, you can recognise the uh, differences and difficulties that people suffering with genuine de gender dysphoria mm -hmm. may experience, especially if they are sports athletes and they are going to struggle to know where they can go from that point onwards. But at the same time, like you say, that's not a reason to upend the foundational fairness that sports is supposed to yes, be exactly. based on. Yes, and, exactly. And, and besides, who's to say that trans people can't compete in sports? I don't know. In, in, introduce a new, a new transgender league, for example. I mean, if there's that I mean, many of them... I don't see too much of an issue with that. Obviously, there's going to be uh, a, a logistical mm. nightmare, I'd imagine. But at the same time, if you actually do care about these issues and stand by them and believe in them yeah. so much, you're going to have to come up with some yeah. actual solutions with at the, some point. The numbers of people who'd come who would come forward to participate so would, would make it difficult, as you say. Mm. But Novatilova goes on to say to Transmedia Watch founder Helen Belcher, I hurt people with my comments. That bothers me. I campaigned all my life for LGBT rights. Ah, but the rights that she campaigned for, I mean, that she's she's a, a lesbian, I believe, yeah, I assume, were very, very different I to what's that being she proposed was now. More campaigning for the LGB side yes. of you know, the... you know, the whole thing, as in being gay is okay. Yes. Like, I mean, I'm, I mean, needless to say, I think we 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 readily accept that, but that's not what we're contending. Absolutely, we're not. Con that's not what we're contending with, I don't with even, intersectionalism. I don't <laughs> care about people being transgender in and of itself if that's if they're suffering from gender mm. dysphoria or anything like that. It's more upending society in their <laughs> in their ongoing quest yeah. for acceptance that I disagree with. I don't like uh, putting it on kids. I don't like uh, changing the definition of words and upending the very idea of what male and female is. And I don't like it affecting sports either. So. 
no, it's it's something that bring that brings people together and actually yep. enables us to see value beyond gender identities, if anything, and yep. and, and abstract notions and of race. That, it's not the quest for rights; it's the quest for entitlements. Yes, exactly. Um, but needless to say, what we need are more people in sport with an actual spine, um, just <laughs> like the states in the US, uh, Texas included, which are thankfully holding firm, at least for now. Um, that that's w- with regards to the uh, what was it, Le- Leah Thomas being um, unable to um, to enter those events. But one of these who does seem to be holding firm is Paula Radcliffe, who rightfully says, I think rather politely, that these athletes who want want these special rights to be recognised as something which they biologically aren't um, are actually, well, for a start, being selfish in being willing to ruin the entire sport. Because let, let, let's not kid ourselves that that's what will happen if everyone caves into what they are demanding. Well, yeah, I mean, men are so good at everything. We're yeah. better at women than women yeah. are at their own sports. Yeah, but, but, but let, let, let's play the video as, um, as I suppose the good news part of the story. It's a number of athletes and could be a growing number who, who have those elevated levels of testosterone. And it's not just about that either. It's the fact that essentially you have a, a body that has almost gone through male puberty uh, and is stronger, physiological differences, bone mass, the strength, not having to deal with periods, not having to worry about um, managing your menstrual cycle around competitions. Those ramifications for what it means in their sports and for what it means for the future of female sport and also what it will do in terms of the whole transgender question and will it open the door up there to to transgender actually being able to say, you know what, we don't need to bring our levels down either. We don't need to have any kind of surgery. We can just identify how we feel and then we can just come in and compete in women's sport and that would be the death mm. of women's sport. That last bit is the is the most important because that 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 is now what's what's being debated. We've 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 already seen for well, well, transgender people participating and some sometimes having had um te- like what was it accepted testosterone limits, but it's now yes. being demanded that they be abolished. That's the, that's the thing as well. I think there is. I understand why, but she brings up some great points mm. that this is very multifaceted. It is not purely about the testosterone levels. Yes, There's that's a very good point. W- very very many more aspects to consider mm. in this i mean you can just go with just i mean if you're going to talk about contact sports there's the size to uh, take uh, take into consideration there is what she was bringing up which i hadn't actually considered before which was not having to deal with menstrual cycles therefore not mm. having to tailor your training and when you're actually competing mm. around that even just the fact that men on average have broader shoulders than the women and you, you many know, other factors you just cannot cast these things aside and it, mm. it, it, gen- it genuinely breaks my heart to know that we've actually got to this Point, yes, it's really. ridiculous. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to check out all the premium content we have on the site. Yeah, we've got loads and it's all really, really good. So why should you sign up? Why should you support us? Well, because you're going to get stuff that you don't get anywhere else. Like the cultural series that John and I have started, which is talking about the politics and philosophy of science fiction. Because everyone was demanding it. And John was like, let's do Star Trek. Okay. And everyone loved it. And they were like, okay, let's do Stargate. And he had never watched this. And so he's like, is this military propaganda? I'm like, no. It's it's not military propaganda. It's basically a soap opera set in a science fiction setting. It's but anyway, we've got really great stuff like that. And then we've obviously got our articles, which have got audio narration for the Silver Tier members, such as this anti civilizational environmentalism by Hugo, as in look at them. They want to actually erase civilization. And they're actually not very shy about saying it at this point. Uh, but anyway, moving on, we've got uh, interviews with absolute mad lads, such as Miles of Kabul that you did. Good guy. Did nothing wrong. <laughs> this, is, this is the guy who had to be evacuated out of Afghanistan because he was on holiday there. Basically. Yeah, the funny thing is, like, there's loads of criticisms of him that are out there, but we just sat down and went through them, and none of them hold water. Hmm. So enjoy yeah, he seemed like a really nice guy, and he's he's got a really um, a placid temperament. Like, he's not like some sort of raging lunatic or anything. I was really surprised. I expected him to be mad. But anyway, we've also got loads of uh, regular content, such as our book clubs. This is the Communist Manifesto that uh, Thomas and I recently did. It's very interesting, if you're not a communist, to read the Communist Manifesto, because there are, there are some telltale signs of conservatism that are embedded within it. I know that sounds hard to believe, but trust me, it's in there. Uh, anyway, moving on, we've got our spicy podcast that we can't put on YouTube. Can't carry on talking about that on this channel. Anyway, we've also got uh, the contemplations, this one that you did with Josh, talking about Parliament. Yeah, so Does this, it work? This is just a, an in-depth look at the system and where it comes from and why mm. it's a bit of a meme mm. as mentioned like the house of lords why does that exist it's literally just because like the 
the lords, uh, sorry, the what is it, the, the burgesses and the priests and whatnot didn't want to sit with all the, the barons and whatnot. So they just separated into two groups in the king's chamber, and then that became the two houses. And yeah. that's how the system works. Yes. Amazing. And uh, finally, we've got the epochs that Bo and I do every week. This was an amazing one. This is a life of General Gordon. And I'm really glad I get to juxtapose this with the interview with Miles of Kabul, because the, you can see that these two characters, these two people are cut from exactly the same cloth, like deeply Christian, like crazy adventurers, love living a life of danger. And the, the life of Gor Gordon of Khartoum is honestly a, a real thrill a minute. Uh, right now, I, I didn't know anything about me either. So Bo's taking me through what happened and I was just wrapped. I had such a great time. But anyway, there we go. And if you want to check us out on Alt Tech, be sure to follow us on Getter. So there's getter.com and the at there being Lotus Eaters underscore com because Lotus Eaters .com didn't work on the at, but it is the but You can't put dots in the yeah. at names. But, but anyway, go and follow us on Getter. And uh, if you'd like to get access to all that premium content or all the free stuff we also have on the website, go to lotuseaters.com and subscribe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.